Hello everyone and welcome <laughs> back to the channel. For those of you who have never seen this channel before, she is Carrie. He's Bob. And this is Life Redesign and Carrie and I travel full time with our RV and we like to go around the country and debunk a lot of the stuff you see on YouTube and that's what we're gonna do today because it is that season, Carrie, it is that time of year again. It is that time where everybody's gonna start making those videos that say everybody's quitting RV life. And well, you know, here's the thing, people do quit. And we're gonna talk about that today because after making a video, calling those YouTubers out and it's reached almost a half a million views, we've actually gotten an awful lot of feedback and we've talked and met with hundreds of people in RV parks across this great country that uh, recognized us because of those videos and said, hey, you're missing some points. And we, that's what we wanna share. Now, for the sake of this video, if you're here because you don't like RVers, uh, because yes, there are an awful lot of people who just can't stand the nomad lifestyle, the lack of traditional living, and you're here to leave mean comments about people who do that, well, don't bother because I'm just going to delete you in the comment section. Or actually, Carrie will delete you. She's pretty good at that uh, because this is not a democracy. This is our channel, and we like to present things truth in well, honest. We run it as we see fit. Thank you. So here's the thing, right? First and foremost, RV living, that terminology, as Carrie and I have discussed before, has been hijacked by a bunch <laughs> of people with GoPros just like this. And, uh, well, you know, they have an agenda. And uh, RV living, that terminology, can, well, represent a lot of different ways of living in an RV. Some people do it for financial reasons and are stationary. Some people are like Carrie and I that travel full time. And then there's some people that just, well, they're in between. For the purpose of this video, we're going to go with just a segment that is just like us full time travelers because that's what we know. I'm going to try to keep that sun out of the way, but we can't always do it. So after thousands of comments and uh, lots of viewer feedback, uh, well, we've learned a few things that yes, inevitably, somebody somewhere is going to quit RV life. And just like anything else, there's always gonna be a time and a place mm -hmm. for everything. That's no different than if we make a video about weed or if we make a video about swinging lifestyle, there's a time and a place for everything. And no, we're not swingers. But anyhow, yeah. I'll probably edit that out. No, he will not. What we wanna do is just have a frank discussion. We're here today in North Carolina. We are at Fort Macon and we're on the beach, as you can see here, just having a, you know, just a casual walk. We want to keep this kind of light hearted and casual. Uh, but one of the reasons that people quit the RV life, Carrie, is, well, it's not. It's not cheap. It, that's right. It's not <laughs> cheap. In fact, it will cost you as much money as you allow it to cost you. Mm -hmm. And while we get to do a lot of things like this, we're more about the experience of being out here and doing things. Um, if you're in to going into heavy tourist areas and stuff, and you want to do all kinds of crazy things, like Miss Thing here wants to go paratrooping or whatever it Paris is. Parasailing, and I will do it. That kind of stuff adds up pretty quickly. In fact, we have <laughs> friends, and we've met quite a few people that, I don't know, they've shot through their entire budget for the year inside of three months because they wanted to go experience everything there was to experience in one area very quickly. You say a high-end resorts, that stuff becomes expensive. Mm -hmm. So that unfortunately is a pretty good thing, is about financials. Um, it can be just like living at home, expensive, or it can be cheap depending on how you live. And that's a good reason why people do quit, is because you know, it's expensive and you know your financial position changes. The other reason is simply because, well, it's not like being on vacation. You have an RV and you travel with it when you're on vacation, you can have a blast because you know that after that week or two is up, you are just going right back home to the comforts of your own water bed or whatever you got. <laughs> yeah, that's right, I said water bed. Wow. They should bring those back, by the way. But you're going <laughs> back, back to what is familiar with 
your life, right? So you get to go down to the Keys for a week and then you go back to New Hampshire. And we know because we've done this. Um, and it is not what was portrayed, especially during the pandemic times, where everybody was showing you that it was the greatest thing in the world. And there was no lines, no waiting in anywhere you went. We experienced that ourselves when we traveled. We didn't film any of it. But we just had fun because we went to Graceland in the middle of the pandemic, and we were the only two people inside Graceland. It's a once-in-a-lifetime experience. But they sold that, is that that's the way it is all the time. Now, when you get out here and you're doing this and the pandemic's over and you're whatever, it's not a vacation. So some of that sets in, and that's kind of hard for people to deal with. It's like, hey, wait a minute. I thought this was RV living and we were going to have fun and people forgot the living part. And that's kind of what we do. That's our niche for yeah. this channel is we show you that middle ground because this is life on the road. So there's covered the financial parts, right? Yep. We covered that it's not a vacation. So the other part we heard from quite a lot of people was, well, they couldn't do it because of the lack of stability. Meaning that, well, on the road, things happen. You pull into an RV park and you get that gut feeling that just doesn't feel right. Or you're in a town that, well, just isn't cool for you and, and what your vibe is. Uh, what do the kids call it, Carrie? They're right. not, you're not picking up what the other people are putting down. You have oh. to leave and you bail, right? And Carrie and I have done that quite a few times. Um, I think more times than you probably want. Yeah sometimes but you know what there's times I wish we did and we didn't and it's okay because so. everybody has that feeling right yeah but there's certain people that just need that stability they need that comfort of knowing that their address isn't going to change that their neighbors are always going to be the same and when you get out here and you're on the road full-time it is difficult um, you know the, the making friends with somebody and then realizing that you're probably not going to see them for six or eight months or maybe never um, that's kind of tough for some people to deal with and Carrie and I always like to joke around that we're loners and no I'm not self-diagnosed in all this other nonsense but we primarily keep to ourselves but we can understand and we can be sympathetic of people that don't keep to themselves and that they thrive on the energy of others and that's kind of tough to deal with. And, and that's just part of the way this lifestyle is, is that you're not always going to be surrounded by familiar things. No, but there's always new people to meet. There's always, there's Absolutely. always something. There is always something. And is, you just have to change your perception mm -hmm. of whatever. So, you know, as we climb into these, if you are just starting the full-time RV life of traveling and everything else, these are little advice, little things that you can take away and say, hey, I'm going to keep that in the back of my mind. If you've been out here doing this for a long period of time, then you kind of know already. And maybe this could be a little wake up call for you to say, hey, um, you know, I don't want to fall into that trap. And maybe I'm going to, I don't know, pay attention to those people that were next to us for so long. All right. Another reason that people so what you guys don't realize. <laughs> is that uh, every time we take a break, Carrie's kissing me on the side of the face. She loves me today. It's okay. So the well, next well, one this is... this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> so the next one is, uh, we heard quite a lot, is people had a hard time being self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. uh, when you live this type of lifestyle, and it's just the way it is, you have to learn pretty quickly to adapt and do things on your own. Because a lot of the times trying to find somebody to help you is kind of rough. Uh, it can be time consuming uh, and there's just situations that as much as I like to joke that there's never been a situation that I've been in that I haven't found a way to throw money at it. Um, we found quite a few situations where even no matter how much money we were going to throw at it, we just couldn't get the job taken care of by somebody. That's, that's hard. So if you're not self-sufficient and you're not able to handle certain things, Maybe you have a physical ailment or you have a health condition or something like that. That weighs on people an awful lot. It's kind of tough. So the other reason that people quit full-time RV life, especially coming out of the pandemic, and this one came up an awful lot. Now, before I go down this road, I want to say that 
I'm extremely blessed that my position was full-time remote and my company has not decided to change this. Um, and I have my little piece of paper, but there was a lot of people that got told, hey, you're going full-time remote. And they took that and they ran with it and they made an Literally. awful <laughs> lot of life choices. Yeah. They got on the road after, and I mean, we're talking people that had sold their house. We've talked to couples that, you know, they sold everything, they hit the road because they were told that they were full-time remote and everything else, and guess what? XYZ company said, eh, eh, you're all coming back to the office, and if you don't come back to the office, you're gonna be canned. And, uh, you know, and, and this is big companies that did this, and they lost their livelihood while on the road. There's ways to combat that. Uh, you can do camp posting, you can do stuff, but it's very hard to sit here and be used to making 100,000 a year and traveling full time and then being told, well, the only way you're gonna stay on the road is if you maybe make 25,000 mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, by the way, we'll give you full hookups along the way. That's pretty tough. And if you're in that position, you know how hard in, in, in that, that feeling in your gut can be. Um, and really what this segues into, the real reason that a lot of people just quit this lifestyle is, well, unfortunately, it's because of lack of research. Now, Gary and I get emails all the time where we're somebody's inspiration for going full time. And at first, Gary and I were like, wow, that's the coolest thing to know that you're reaching people on that level. And then the more that that happened for us, especially as our channel has grown, um, we actually saw concern with that because we don't want to be your inspiration for going full time. No. We, if anything, we want to be your inspiration to find out if full time is right for you. And too many YouTubers, I think, take that for granted. Mm -hmm. And they just real, you know, they just don't know when to reel it in and say, hey, don't do what we do. This is just a guide. Everybody wants to feel it seems like on YouTube, especially, everybody wants to be famous. Everybody wants to uh, be an expert on Thank something. God forbid, because I certainly don't want to be responsible for somebody going, yes, they can do it. Here, I'm getting in my van, my whatever have you, going down the road and something happens and, well, they said. Right. And I don't want to be responsible for that. Unfortunately, that happens quite a bit. And, and I know there's always somebody in the comment section that's going to go, I would never. And anybody who does take an advice like that is asking for it. No, just people are generally kind and trusting of other people. And just because you wouldn't do it doesn't mean that somebody, you know, that sweet lady Gertrude in her, her chair in her home in, in, in Nebraska somewhere was just looking for a change, sees that it can be done and says, well, if they can do it, I can do it. Because, well, your situation is gonna be different from everybody else. A case in point is I'm gonna bring up a situation here about uh, something, again, we're no scripts here, by the way. There's no scripts. Uh, there's no notes. Carrie didn't even bring the book of knowledge. We're just nothing. having a heartfelt conversation because I think this is something that the reality needs to be talked about a little more is let's talk about RVs in general. Um, you'll see a plethora of RV channels telling you every day how RVs are made of crap and they're all breaking and they're all falling apart and they're all just trash and garbage. And, and we see this quite a bit. And the truth is RVs have been made the same way <laughs> for quite some time. Um, they've been using the lightest materials possible. They've been made to the cheapest specs because, well, they're RVs and they're recreational vehicles, right? And it gives some validity to that, um, that you have to know that as the end consumer, that when you're buying this, you're buying something that was made for vacations. The average vacation in this country gained by employees is somewhere between two to four weeks per year, depending on your job status. I think I get six after 15 years of being with the company. So those recreational vehicles, those RVs, those travel trailers are only really made for that purpose. 
Now, there's some that are made for at a higher standard. The more you spend, you spend a half million dollars, you can get a beautiful Class A that's probably built better than our house. But most people just go with the assumption that since it was good for Sal and Susie on their Labor Day weekend get out, um, that it's going to be good enough to live in. Now, yeah, you can make that happen. We do just well in our grand design, but we're prepared for when it doesn't. This is no different than doing your research about having a house built. Okay, now Carrie and I owned the same house for 17 years, and over the course of that 17 years, you know, that house was rock solid until a storm came through and knocked everything over, or put a hole in the roof, or a tree fell down. You get the point that you have to do your research, you have to be prepared for situations like that. And the problem with YouTube, especially, is that YouTube tends to grab those half of 1% of things that break and they blow it up and they put it out there because, well, it's clicky and it's attention grabbing. And if you're just starting out and you're looking into this, take a deep breath. It's going to be okay. You'll be fine, but you have to do research. And really, it comes down to that. Very simple. And the other part of it, Carrie, is the end of the day, mm -hmm. at some point, somewhere, everybody quits something, right? Yeah. So we're going to leave you with this final thought is that, you know, there comes a point in time where everybody quits um, just simply because it's run its course. Or they've traveled the country and they found their little piece of pie somewhere where they want to settle. I mean, they've done it all. So now they have the land, they have, they can put their RV on their land and just live. Absolutely. Now, Carrie and I have no plans ever of quitting the RV life. We like our full-time travel. We like our independence. We feel that we've got a grasp on things and we have our little bubble that we like to live in. Uh, but we're also not stupid. We know that if Carrie gets hurt, or uh, for those of you who don't know, Carrie's a cardiac patient. If her health becomes an issue, um, that's our time to pack it in. I, my back is notoriously just junk. <laughs> um, and if you ever see me bouncing around in videos, you kind of know why. I can't stand still for long periods of time. That is all part of it. If we get to the point where we can't physically do this, and Carrie's seen me have real concerns about mm -hmm. being able to physically maintain doing certain things, um, then we know it will be time to come off the road. Do I think that's going to happen anytime soon? No. Yeah. But uh, it could, and we're prepared for that. So wherever you are, know that everything has a shelf life, that we are all just cartons of milk in the back <laughs> of the fridge with a date. And that's something to keep in the back of your mind as you start this journey. That's it from Fort Macon here in North Carolina in the beautiful late February day. Uh, we hope that wherever you are that you're doing well. And if you're looking at doing this journey, you take this in as part of your research. And at the same time, if there's something we've missed, leave a comment down below. Let Carrie know. And uh, we'll see if we revisit this subject in another eight months or so. Probably not because I think it's been beat to hell. <laughs> but uh, we just wanted to give you what we feel is an honest, fresh perspective. And hopefully you get to enjoy this little walk on the beach because this is killing me because it's very uneven here. <laughs> Until next time, I'm Bob. I'm Carrie. Catch you. Next, next time. time. Whoa, you did it again. I did it again.